My name is uh, Swami Ravi Rudra Bharati. I was formerly uh, Rudolph Valentine, MD, um, because I, I did practice medicine, holistic medicine, and psychiatry, uh, which I completed a residency in psychiatry um, for 50 odd years. Um, <clears throat> But um, I am, at this point, really interested in uh, speaking to those who uh, find themselves baffled about how to deal with illness and medicines and, and what are the choices. Because I think the, the range of choices is really much larger than we might know might be aware of because mm -hmm. what we see on television are ads for um, pharmaceutical drugs uh, because uh, pharmaceutical companies have um, enough money to buy ads mm -hmm. but there are many other approaches to um, healing that don't really have the budget to put it before you <laughs> and so uh, it, it's I think it's really a relief to discover that oh there are other ways of doing this you know and that there are other ways that not only might be as effective or more effective but also free from side effects and um, <clears throat> so what my goal with this little um, ramble through the world of medicine is it's to um, kind of begin to identify some of the other options and how you find them and what they are and when do you use them and that sort of thing so people feel that um, they're not constrained and that there's uh, a lot of choices um, <clears throat> so I um, I kind of chalked out uh, a series of different approaches to medicine that uh, I thought um, in this webinar that we it's coming up, uh, we could talk about each of them a little bit and understand where they come from, what is the history of them, what are they good for, what would they really work for, what are... Um, when do we resort to um, less desirable choices which might have side effects? Um, and so that's, that's uh, it's quite a, a world out there of, of different modes of healing, modalities for healing that um, many of us are not aware of because we, we haven't been exposed to it. Um, so that's my interest is in bringing out the, the, um, the multitude of choices that we have. And I think I'm particularly interested in that because I grew up with, um, you know, growing, going to my grand, going, my grandmother would write a, um, a prescription herself. And I would take it to the chemist or the drugstore, and he would he had a big book with those recipe, all these recipes mm -hmm. in it. And when he saw what Miss Mag wrote, he would compound that. He would make that remedy, put it in a little bottle, and I would pay him and go home, and she, she would dispense it to her children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And um, it usually worked. <laughs> um, that was a long time ago and that was a different world but there were certain wonderful things about that world and that was we we didn't have the fear of uh, side effects so I I, um, I kind of grew up with the, the feeling that that's how you treat people you know later I went to medical school I became an MD I, uh, I did a residency in psychiatry. I did all kinds of different um, 
medicines. Um, I remember in, at the beginning of my residency in psychiatry, mm -hmm. treating someone who was very violently psychotic, you know, really disturbed, and giving her the, the uh, current um, medication for that. And the next day she was quieter and more mm -hmm. uh, easily managed. And I said, oh, it's wonderful, you're so much better. And she said, no, I'm not. And I said, you're not, you seem better. She said, well, before I was crazy on the outside, now I feel crazy on the inside. And it's horribly unpleasant. Mm -hmm. And so that was a surprise for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because I just was looking at the surface and you know, accepting that, well, this was the way you treat someone, but actually do I really want to treat someone by making them feeling feel more disturbed inside than outside? So that kind of um, reminded me of what uh, I grew up with and my, my grandmother <clears throat> would not touch um, prescriptions that she didn't write. <laughs> and my mother also fell into that category. And um, my grandmother, <laughs> when she was in her old fifties or so, she asked her, her country doctor, um, what can I do so that I am healthy? Uh, in these years of growing older mm -hmm. and he said um, well miss mag just stay away from doctors <laughs> <laughs> and so she did that doctors and um, medicines um, and she lived to be a hundred my mother followed in her footsteps she lived to be 101 <laughs> And her sister followed in footsteps, and next week she will be 103. <laughs> so they were very much against um, going to doctors and taking drugs. Um, and <clears throat> so that led me to wanting to learn more about other kinds of ways of treating people and going to India and studying home. Uh, Ayurvedic medicine mm -hmm. and then it was in India that I was introduced to homeopathic medicine mm -hmm. and then I um, spent uh, had a partner and she was a um, practitioner of Chinese medicine mm -hmm. and um, acupuncturist and so I would give her homeopathic remedies she would give me needles <laughs> didn't seem like a fair exchange. Um, but um, yeah, so my, uh, I was opened up to larger, uh, um, broader concepts of what healing can be. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that a lot of people are discovering these things that there are other things available and they're bit by bit learning this and learning that in a sort of happenstance way. But um, my idea is to lay out a range of possibilities and understand what they do and why you might choose them mm -hmm. and what the advantages and disadvantages are mm -hmm. so that um, people are more uniformly informed. Mm -hmm. So we hope that you will um, be able to find the time to join us for this webinar uh, so that you will have more information for yourself and for your children and your friends and your family. Please join us and um, we will all explore this together. <laughs>